an important piece here, and probably something that we'll talk a bit more about down the line, is that my opinion changed over the years on this topic. And I do believe that you need to have some of the skills, some of the knowledge in order to be an agile leader or say a scrum master or a product owner. I don't mean you need to be a full-time developer, programmer, or have this experience, but I think you need to be technical enough to really be successful. Mm. Going back to the technical enough term, what does it mean? And it's something that I think I did not realize, you know, there's something you've been doing and you understand it's much harder for you to realize that it might be more complex than you think, right? For people who never been uh, maybe exposed to it, right? And I think that is that technical enough that comes from this understanding, that realization that I had is that how comfortable are you talking about the topics or in, in the case of sports, how comfortable are you in um, explaining specific or particular challenges that you might be facing, right? When you're playing uh, sports um, or when you are uh, a member of a team, do you understand what are some of the common pain points that they need to face? And do you actually know just the, the terms or do you understand what it means um, in terms of how it affects people's work, right? And that technical enough just means really having enough of the understanding of the workflow that developers go through. Maybe you don't know exactly the details of how to write a program, but do you have a general idea of what it could look like? Maybe you don't know how to write it, but you know what um, maybe some systems look like, what the general process of getting the program like Hello World to um, to run. And just, you know, just knowing this Hello World, I, just the, the, this thing, every, you tell it to a developer, you tell it to a programmer, they know exactly what it means, Hello World, right? But if you don't know, maybe you don't have uh, enough of that knowledge. Kind of, it's not really internal jokes, or internal knowledge, but it's just general understanding and general knowledge of the um, um, the workflow. I guess that would be a way to uh, to explain it. <laughs> well, I think it comes back to that realization that I had. Right? Uh, if you look at maybe some of my even older content. Uh, one of the first videos that I did on this topic, do Scrum Masters have to be technical? I think I was very, um, how do I say? I was just generally thinking you don't have to know anything. Uh, you are focusing on the people, you're focusing on the processes, you need to know Scrum, and very, really uh, minimum um, of that technical knowledge that is needed. But what I realized throughout the years is that I was always interested in technical things. And I think maybe after having spoken with scrum masters who didn't have any kind of experience or understanding of tech the technical side and who also believe that they don't need to know any of that. And then I saw a lot of people who wanted to enter the tech industry without any prior experience, right? Which is fine. You can switch industries. That is absolutely normal. Uh, but they wanted to enter immediately into a Scrum Master role. So not only you don't have maybe the experience as a Scrum Master, uh, which is fine on its own, but you're also trying to enter a role coaching people how to be more effective in their job without understanding their job. <laughs> So I've always kind of been close enough to tech and I thought, okay, well, I'm not really technical, right? So why is it harder for other people who are not technical to do this job? And I just realized that I'm technical enough. <laughs> and I think that's going back to that previous explanation is that, well, yes, I'm not a developer, but I know some of the code, right? I, um, 
did do some website programming for my website. I even uh, was interested in game development at some point, and I learned how to write code in C Sharp for my mini games, you know? And I went through an introduction to computer science course that also included uh, some coding. And so I understand the some of the challenges that you might be facing when you're writing code, right? And then through my work with developers, um, I also was able to learn from them more kind of specifically about what their workflow looks like and learn some new terminology as well that I'm much more familiar and comfortable with using right now. Because you have the, say, the development or well, developers, right? Uh, people doing that uh, coding, QA, all of that work. And then you have a uh, management or leadership team or business. And they live in two completely different spaces. <laughs> if you're more of a humanitarian, um, less uh, technical person, you will naturally be drawn towards that business side. And it will be much easier for you to understand the business side. But you need to understand both, right? And you already have business who doesn't understand developers who say, well, it, it's not as easy as you think. It takes longer because it's complex work, right? They already don't understand. If you are kind of a mediator between the two, you need to understand the two sides and create that connection. You know? Well, I guess the uh, common answer would be training. <laughs> you educate yourself you know there are so many ways that you can learn now and it's you don't have to go to university to earn a com computer science degree to really learn it right there's lots of um courses that you can go to online and that can really help you understand um obviously uh, there are various levels and it's i think like you just need to be curious, you know, it's like you need to be interested in learning. And by default, for me, any agile related role, you have to be interested in lear continuous learning. Right? And for me, I'm always fascinated. I'm finding a new model and I get excited. I'm like, oh, my God, I can totally use this. And, you know, it just excites me knowing something um, when I was doing recently a, a course on DevOps foundations, they were covering so many different uh, models and I'm like, okay, stop the video. I'm going to go and check it out. I want to learn more about it. And just that is what really can help you um, get to the point where you can be successful, I think. So yeah, it's go learn, do some research, read up some articles, uh, get excited about it. <laughs> If you're excited about new things and trying out, and if it doesn't work out, you're still excited and you take it as a learning opportunity, then you should be good. And if you hate it, then you're going to hate this position, probably, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> well, what do you do? I think it depends on how the conversations go and if it maybe is a very deep discussion that is going on, you don't really want to interrupt it. Um, but if you want to take some notes, probably some notes on what have you heard and what you did not understand, I generally found it really helpful to kind of just take notes on whatever I'm hearing. And that obviously I started doing when I was facilitating retrospectives or discussions, I would usually try to take as many key notes as possible during that time. Um, and then reach out to the team and ask them the questions. And I think this is where that courage comes in, where you need to be uh, courageous to tell them, hey, I have no idea what this means. Can you please help me? Can you explain it? And then ask questions um, to like clarifying questions, even if you think there might be wrong, like paraphrasing and, okay, this is what I understood. Was this correct? Or did I completely misunderstood you? Right. Um, so that would be kind of a way to, to approach this. Right. And um, just 
wanting to ask questions, kind of going on and, and, and say, even if you are, um, maybe the discussion, the discussions in the, in the team are fairly easy. You understand the flow of work or how they work in general, but just reaching out to the team and asking them, can you explain to me how you work? Can you explain to me what the process looks like? Can you show me some of the software you use? You know, because that's how you can then learn. Um, and those are skills are kind of transferable as well. If you manage, like if you are learning, say, new tools uh, often, right? then it will be easier to pick up in, uh, a tool that you've never used before, right? Like I've never used uh, Azure DevOps until this year. And now I'm working with a team that uses Azure DevOps and somehow I'm practically teaching the team how to use it. I've never used it before. <laughs> so <laughs> just the fact that I always would be interested in learning more of different tools, I was able to pick it up quite quickly. You know, so it, it's the same, just asking questions, going out, kind of out of your way to try to understand. If you are coming in and uh, asking developers, okay, can you explain to me how you work, right? And what is your workflow? And I think that's something that we discussed before. That is a very broad question. Like if you come to me and ask me just about not specifically development and say, okay, what is your workflow? Well, what do you mean? What exactly are you talking about? <laughs> Can you be more specific? And it's the same way when you are, if you want to learn how the, uh, maybe the developers are working, you need to come in with more pointed and specific questions. Um, if I want to understand a bit more about the workflow of a new team, for example, I'm working with, I'm going to ask more specifically, okay, do you have, um, dev environment, QA environment, UAT environment, how does it work? Uh, is it automatic or do you have to push the changes manually? Um, okay, is there a validation step? Um, if I talk about CICD, I will also ask questions, okay, is it a separate department that has to create your pipelines or do you have just, you know, you need to kind of know those questions and you just, it. If you ask me, do I actually understand how to like create a pipeline? No, I have no idea. But I know that there is this step in some processes, right? I know that there might be manual testing, automa automated testing. Okay, I know what unit tests are, right? So small things like this, where I can ask specific questions like, okay, well, we're talking about unit tests. Okay, what's your um, coverage, right? And if you're listening to this, I'm like, I just heard 10 million words. I have no idea what it means. <laughs> okay, well, you need to do some research to be able, because those things aren't hard. Once again, I've never written a unit test in my life. I don't know exactly how it looks like, but I understand the concept of what it is and how it's supposed to kind of help you test, right? So those would be, I guess, some of the things that... Um, uh, you need to um, change in how you ask the questions, right? Um, to be more specific, what exactly, why are you asking this question? What exactly are you trying to get at, right? When I'm asking questions around, okay, do you have a dev QA UAT environment? What I'm really asking is, okay, um, how much time does it actually take you to get from an idea to production, right? Um, is it difficult for you to go through the steps? Um, is there a lot of manual work involved? Are there are the teams involved? These are the real questions that I'm asking. I'm just asking them in a more kind of going through the tech door, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think it helps them, developers have trust in me, um, I'd say faster, just build that rapport with them um, around this, because I usually come in and say, hey, I'm not a developer, I don't really know, I cannot do your job. Um, I am an expert on Scrum, Agile, facilitation, <laughs> teaching, all of that, uh, but um, I have enough understanding, right? 
And so often what happens is they kind of try to say when I'm doing the initial interviews with people trying to understand what's going on in the company and the team, they kind of dance around a topic trying to make it very um, user-friendly or non-technical, mm -hmm. right? And that often misses the point of a con that, that conversation that I'm trying to have because I need to understand the real pain points. And so once I switch to those more technical questions, they can see, oh, okay, so there is an understanding, right? And they are able to use some of those technical terms with me. They know that I will be able to understand. And that kind of breaks the barrier for them as well, because it is hard for someone technical to speak in a business language, right? The same way as it is hard for a business person to speak in a tech language. That was not that long ago, pretty long ago. Damn, <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah, so that um, exactly kind of a story of um, that happening in one of the teams. And that was more specifically um, at, um, around the role of the product owner, right? So a new person kind of coming into the team as a product owner, fairly new to the role of the product owner, but also not technical at all. And in just six months, this person got to a point where their technical knowledge of the product got so good that the developers were impressed. And like, that is, they were impressed. They, uh, when this person left and I was only able to work with uh, him for a really short time before he left, they would still remember him six months after that. When, if only, you know, this our PO was here, if only because he would understand. And um, that was really, I think that had an impact on them because they really trusted this product owner with the decisions because they knew that he understood. Right. And the way he did that is exactly like that. Coming to the developers and asking questions. Right. Can you show me? Let me figure out how our product works, kind of going into the details and trying to figure it out and then asking questions to the developers. Can you explain it to me? How does it work? I want to learn more. And that really helped build that incredible trust environment between that business side, right? The product owner and the developers. I think, I think that is necessary. The more and more I see that, the more I feel like that, that needs to be said. <laughs> <laughs>